It's time for your weekly financial workout with your elite personal trainers, Ryan and Bob Payne. We'll guide you to build a stronger and more robust financial plan. It's time to pump you up. This is the No Pain, No Gain Financial Podcast. Welcome to No Pain, No Gain Financial Podcast. I'm your host, Ryan Payne, president of Payne Capital Management, along with our chief investment officer, the man with the plan, and who happens to be my father, Bob Payne. Hey, this is our Thanksgiving edition of the No Pain, No Gain podcast. Today, we're going to talk about risk aversion. We're going to discuss everything risk-related, everything from what your risk tolerance is, what it should be, what risk you should be taking in your portfolio. We're going to talk about all the different stages of retirement planning. If you're 15 years out, what should you be doing? 10 years, five years, when you're finally retired, all the different things you need to think about in the life of your financial plan. And we're going to discuss in our financial propaganda segment today, all the news about politics, how it affects your portfolio, what adjustments you need to make or maybe not make with your portfolio, and some of those guarantees out there on annuities at 8 9%. Are they real? We're going to break it down for you, so check it out today. So Bob, what does it mean when someone tells you that they're risk averse? I mean, that can be a lot of different things. Well, it can mean a lot of different things, but I think what it means to all of you is we don't like taking losses. Who wants to lose money, right? The whole idea is to make money. We have an aversion to losing money, and then we blame it on risk. And I think the great irony is, especially because we've been in a 10-year bull market, you probably are risk averse, but when you look at your portfolio and how it's structured, you're taking a lot more risk on than you actually know that you're taking. Hey, Ryan, over the last 45 years, I've worked with a big nonprofit organization. It happens to be a religious institution. And it turned out that we invested in a stock. And according to their social responsibility, they weren't able to own that stock. Now, the board told me, say, you know, Bob, we can't own that. We have to get rid of it. But, you know, do me a favor. Don't sell it until it's done going up. <laughs> and then you brought your crystal ball and said, okay, we'll give it two more weeks. Like you have no idea when the stock's going to stop going up, unfortunately. Exactly. Well, that's what's going on right now. We're in a big, booming bull market. Uh, there's been a lot of skepticism for the last 10 years. You and I have been bullish as can be. But you know, people are saying, hey, why do I want to get out when it's going up? Right. But we're risk adverse, yes. but don't get me out until it's done going up. I mean, that's just human nature. Yeah. And the problem is with investing, you know, when things turn, it's too late because no one can predict that ahead of time, even though people claim they can predict that stuff ahead of time. You really can't. So the key is you have to have what I call proactive asset allocation as opposed to reactive. You already have to have that safety in place before the market goes down. Hey, right. It's almost every week, almost every one of our listeners that are coming in for their portfolio review, they all are in a risk situation where they tell us they're risk averse, but they have a lot of the retirement money, most of the retirement money in what we would consider very risky business. And the reason being is because you probably have assets in a lot of different places and you've never looked at everything in concert because it's we have this proverbial, we always call it the collection of investments. In your 401k, you're doing one thing. You've got your broker, Morgan Stanley, who's doing another thing. You've got money at the credit union and CDs and cash, but you don't really know the risk you have unless you put it all on one page and you can actually see, Bob, what the breakdown of your net worth is and how it's allocated. Yeah, it is. It's very revealing, Rye, because you don't realize until you put it into one cohesive picture that you may be taking more risk than necessary. I mean, I just sat down with a new client this week. They had five mutual funds with a quarter million dollars in each fund. And guess which stocks they owned in each fund, Rye? All the same stocks. I'm going to guess it's Apple, Microsoft, Facebook, Google. <laughs> yeah, they're all large, cap, or large capitalization growth portfolios owning the same stocks over and over and over. And hey, guess what? They've been right for 10 years. It's been the perfect place to be. But the next 10 years is like the previous 10 years. They could lose it all. So it's just, you know, Rod, you know what you need to do? You got to look behind the curtain. And that's what your analysis always does. That's right. What you need to start thinking about is when the tide goes the other way, what is my portfolio going to do then? Not what it's doing right now. It's that proactive approach again versus reactive approach. Hey, Rod, you know what this does? It, this just points to the whole idea of the strategy we've developed over the last 45 years, the A to B strategy. Why not have a strategy where you're rooting for everything in your portfolio to go up as opposed to sitting in bed every night worrying what happens if something goes down? So, Bob, what does that exactly mean, <laughs> it, that you're, you're rooting for everything to go up? Explain that to me. All right, right. Let's take risk as defined in the dictionary by Webster, right? We look up risk, and what we find, it's really just an aversion to loss. 
And that's what we all suffer from. Now, risk, unfortunately, is something that only can be recognized in hindsight. And that's a bad time for that to happen. Wouldn't you agree? Yeah, exactly right. That just goes back to reactive versus proactive. And there's ways you can put what we call your portfolio under the stress test. So you know, in a bad market, am I going to hold up or am I in big trouble? And these are things you can assess now. You don't have to wait for the bear market to happen to realize, oh, I made some bad decisions. Well, that's a universal question. Am I taking too much risk in my portfolio or not enough? And that's what your process really answers, doesn't it? And that's the question you need to ask yourself right now. How do I structure my portfolio where I'm getting growth in there, some risk, but I'm also balancing that out with safety? And for everybody, that's going to be different. You need to find out what that balance is for you because you do need growth and you do need safety. You just need to figure out what's the right mix. It's so simple when you think about investing. It's not about competition, not about, oh, did I do better than my neighbor? It's about achieving your goals, right? It's a process. What is going to give me the return that I need to achieve my goals, to give me the income I need, as opposed to what's going to make me the most money. Yes. And that, how much risk did I take to receive that return? Because that's the other part. So you can have an awesome return, but if you took a lot of risk to get that, that could be a problem. Because again, when things go bad, you're going to feel that pain, no pun intended, on the downside. You know, Rye, that's why I always call you the dean of common sense, right? It's so simple. <laughs> you know, why do something different when you can do just what you need to do? And that's what A to B is about, right? You start with point B, where do you need to go? You work backwards to point A, and the first thing you look at is what's the least risky way to get there and see if that works net of inflation and taxation. And if it doesn't work, then what do you do? Then you simply just readjust the risk to make sure that you have enough growth in there that you can achieve your goals. If you're looking to learn a little more about some of the things we talked about on this podcast, but you're not quite ready for a one-on-one -on -one phone call, no problem. Check out our most recent guide that helps you learn the ins and outs of financial and retirement planning. It's free. And you can download it right now by texting the word bullish. That's bullish, B-U-L-L-I-S-H, to 555-888. That's texting the word bullish to 555-888. You can download our latest guide, Five Ways to Maximize Your Retirement Accounts. Just give you some ideas on how you can save on taxes through health savings accounts, 401ks, Roth 401ks, Roth conversions. We give you some simple, common sense ways to use retirement accounts to save on taxes. Simply text the word bullish to 555-888. That's the word bullish to 555-888. Or check out the show notes for the episode at bebullish.com for a link. Get a clear picture of your finances. I guess, you know, they've got to open my eye. Let's get back to the show. So, Bob, depending on how far out you are from retirement, or if you're retired now, there really are different financial issues you need to be focusing on, depending on what stage of retirement planning you're actually in. So I thought we could start with 15 years out from retirement, and then work our way all the way to retirement. And when you're 15 years out, you're probably in your early 50s. What does that look like from a planning perspective? Well, first of all, Ryan, when you're in your early 50s, that's usually your maximum earning years, right? It's where you're getting paid yeah. the most, where you have the most knowledge and wisdom and you're you know, getting the biggest benefit out of your employment. So I think number one, are you saving as much as possible and sheltering as much income as possible? Because with higher income comes higher taxes. Yes. You've got to utilize those retirement plans at your work or if you're self-employed, there's ways to put money into things like a Roth IRA. But every way you can maximize your savings and do it from a tax perspective is just huge when you're in those peak earning years. And that's where you really start to look at what pension am I entitled to if I am? Or you know, how can I max out my 401k or 403b or my SEP? Uh, you have to look at how things are titled and make sure that uh, you know, you're making the right choices in terms of how you receive that income, even though you're not going to start taking it for maybe 15 or 20 years. Yeah. And that's a great point about titling because now you probably have some assets, right? Before it wasn't as big a deal, but now if you're going to buy that boat to go fishing, you want to make sure that's titled properly. All these different assets you own, you've got to make sure that there's some game plan there. And that's like even just having a simple will becomes more important. Not just a simple will, but also your beneficiary forms, right? You want to make sure that they're titled properly. The last thing your new spouse wants to see is the old spouse getting the benefit of your yeah. savings. Yeah. That's never a good conversation to have. Now, how about when you get to 10 years out, Bob? Now you're like mid-50s, closer to 60. Things are getting a little more real. What things do you have to start thinking about? All right, that's it, buddy. I'm recusing myself from this segment. It's just too depressing for me. Why are you depressed? 
I mean, now we're 10 years out. We still haven't caught up to my age yet. I mean, this is really tough. <laughs> you know what, Bob? You look younger than you are. So, I mean, that great head of hair, isn't that enough? Does that come down to it doesn't matter how you feel, it's how you look, or is that not, not how you look, how you feel, I forget. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds about right. All right, let's but get serious here. So 10 years out from retirement, Ryan, one of the things you want to really take a hard look at is Social Security, right? There's so many different ways that you can take Social Security. I think you told me there's a gazillion options. Yeah, I think it's like 100. I don't know if it's a gazillion, but that's a lot of different ways. And as we talk about a lot, you need to optimize it for you. So the way you take Social Security is going to be very, very germane to your situation. And now's the time you want to start figuring out how do you optimize that and when do you take it? I mean, yeah, just uh, last year, you sat down with mom and I and looked over our Social Security and I was going to wait till I was 70. But you pointed out how we could get a much bigger benefit by me starting it at normal retirement at 66. Mom got half of my benefits. So we're getting a big fat check for the next four or five years, even though I'm still working. And uh, it was um, it was really a good decision, but something I n really wasn't thinking about. So, you know, I'm, I'm like the shoemaker without shoes. Yeah, no, exactly. It's something you have to think about that also plays into when you retire because taking Social Security has a lot to do with if you retire early, maybe you're thinking about your early 60s, maybe your mid 60s, or maybe you're going to go all the way to 70. But now's the time to start thinking about when that date's actually going to be. Yeah, and I think at this age, right, it's that you're really vulnerable to a big setback in the stock market. Not that I'm predicting that, right? We've been in a big booming stock market for the last 10 years. But now it's time to start de-risking the portfolio, right? You're starting to leave the wealth accumulation phase. Yes, that's exactly right. It's not like when you're in your 40s and you just save, save, save. You don't care if the market goes down. Now you have some real assets. You need to think about asset protection, not just about wealth accumulation. And this is the stage where you really want to start to fine tune that portfolio. Now, Bob, how about five years out? Now you're like early 60s to mid 60s and you're really close to retirement. What do you need to be doing? Number one, Rye, retirement is all about one thing and that's income. income. <laughs> At the same time. That's right. It's all about income when you're in your early 60s. So you got to make sure you have a repeatable, dependable income stream. And you know where, where are you going to get some of that income, right? No, that's exactly right. So now you have to start thinking about, first off, what income streams are coming in? When am I getting Social Security? You determine that. When are you going to take your pension if you have one? How are you going to pull from your portfolio? Because odds are you have that collection of investments, but, but what's the best way to draw those down when that paycheck finally turns off? That's right. And you need that income stream because the next thing you really got to think about is what are you going to do with all your free time? Because suddenly you're not working nine to five, five, six days a week. If you own a business, you're not working 12, 15 hours a day, seven days a week. You know, what are you going to do with your time? What does retirement look like for you and your spouse? And what's that going to cost you? Because now you can start to break down what are those real expenses because you're probably not paying for college anymore, hopefully. All those tuitions are done. You're mm -hmm. probably not paying the mortgage anymore. You're getting close to being finished with that. What are your core expenses going to be? And then adding on those ancillary fun expenses like trips and then other things like health care, you got to add all that into the mix to know exactly what income you're going to need. You're absolutely right, Ryan. Now, when you go on a trip, you're not going for three or four days or five days or a long weekend. You're taking a month. And that gets expensive and it adds up. So you got to make sure that you have that factored into your plan. Yeah, now it's time to have that solidified income plan. What expenses am I going to have and how do I match it with what incomes are coming in? And then, Bob, the day finally arrives. You're finally retired. You're in retirement, which is a journey, not a destination. What things do you think about now? Well, number one, the number one thing that everyone has to think about, regardless of your financial situation, is that hidden insidious tax called inflation. Yes, because it's not just about the income coming in today, but you have to account for what's the income going to need over my lifetime, and that's going up over time, and you have to plan for that. Even more so when it comes to medical expenses, because forget about the 2% inflation rate that the Federal Reserve talks about all the time. We're talking about 7 8% inflation when it comes to medical costs and, and home care. I mean, it's expensive, and it's something that uh, everyone is going to be heavily impacted by, and you need to plan. Exactly right. And on top of that, that emergency fund, right? Because now you're not working. If something comes up, how much are you keeping just in cash, just in case something comes out of the blue that you didn't anticipate? If you're enjoying this podcast, if you're getting the knowledge that we believe you're getting out of it, we want to offer you a free consultation to make sure you have the best financial plan possible. We call it our Total Financial Master Plan. If you qualify, here's what you can expect. We're going to look at everything from taxes, 
have you optimize your financial plan for taxes. We're gonna show you how to save on taxes so it's more money in your pocket, not the government's. We're gonna look at income. Income is so much more reliable than the ups and downs of the market. We're gonna show you how to optimize or increase the income on your portfolio. And we're gonna look at diversification. What hidden risks do you have in your portfolio you don't know about? We're gonna show you how to bulletproof and safeguard your portfolio, protect it for retirement. To see if you qualify, simply text the words free financial review to 844 752 6692. That's the words free financial review and text them to 844 752 6692. See if you qualify for our holistic total financial master plan. for Financial Propaganda of the Week. This is where Bob and I scour the daily financial news, call it the biggest offenders of offering obscene and profane financial guidance to help you protect yourself from making any ill-advised financial decisions. We also look for things that are actually positive as well, so put that caveat out there. Bob, what did you find out there this week in the hard world of financial propaganda? Hey, Rye, can you believe how much political information is out in the media today? Oh, I mean, it, that's an understatement. I mean, it's like everything is politicized, no matter what it is. So it's crazy. So yeah, that's uh, it's the way of the news these days. And it's amazing how it impacts everybody's thinking, right? People are thinking about, oh my goodness, there's a huge election coming up next year. And uh, how's that going to impact the stock market? What What is the election going to mean to the stock market? So there was a great article written this week, and I think it's very informative. And it was titled, United We Stand, Divided We Fall, right? And that's a great political maxim. But you know what? It doesn't necessarily hold when it comes to investing. No, that's true. Because we, well, first off, as we know, statistically, whether there's a Democrat, Republican in the White House, it doesn't really make a difference. Statistically, markets and economies do just as well under both parties. And, you know, right now at this time in the election cycle is when things heat up and there's this big belief that all of a sudden we got to make adjustments in our portfolio because of politics. It's usually not a good decision. Well, you know, the bigger thing is, Rye, if you're rooting for your party, whatever that party happens to be, and you're hoping that your party takes the White House and takes the Senate and takes the House of Representatives, you know what that means? You're going to have a bad time in the stock market. (laughs) How could that be, Bob? Believe it or not, Rye, since the turn of the century, whenever the federal government was controlled by a single party, the return on the stock market was underwhelming. We do best when we have a divided government, just like the last election, right? The Democrats took in the midterms, took over the House. We've had a big, boomy stock market. And you know why that is, Rye? Why is that, Bob? The market loves gridlock. They love it when they do nothing, when they can't get anything done, when they can't mess up the economy. (laughs) Yeah, no, I mean, that's actually, there's there's truth to that because you might have heard this before, but markets love certainty. With gridlock, you have some certainty. And that was one of the reasons why initially when President Trump was in office in that November of 2016, the market sold off initially because it was uncertain. It was a little bit different than what we had had in the past, but eventually markets get past that. And as we know, at the end of the day, if they, they do love certainty. So any kind of gridlock is actually very positive, which is kind of intuitive but actually true when it comes to investing. You know, Rye, just it just goes to show every week, you know, financial propaganda should not impact your financial life. You know, we live by that maxim. Time passes and markets operate and they don't care about what you think, how you feel, or your political affiliation. Stay invested, enjoy the ride. You know, this is the biggest bull market of our lives and the longest expansion in the history of the country. And I'll tell you what, I can't wait till next week. Hey. You would know that by uh, seeing the news for sure. So, Bob, I keep getting this ad up on my CNBC.com when I go up there to look at the market news. It's this advertisement for a 9.1 annual annuity return. Now, 9.1% sounds like an awesome return, but I've never heard of a 9.1 annual annuity return. I feel like that has to be something different. There has to be a caveat here. Well, I think this comes under the title of when something is too good to be true, you better run. Yes, because let's face it, we see 9%. We're thinking to ourselves, I want to get 9% on my money. I want to get that guaranteed. But when you're talking about an annuity return of 9%, we know it's not the same thing, that it's some kind of math that they're running to figure out what kind of lifetime of income you would receive. But it's not really that 9.1% they're promising in this fantastic ad here on CNBC. Well, you know, right again, it always comes down to common sense. 
the historical rate of return of the riskiest asset class out there, the stock market, is about 9% a year. But it also comes with you know years where you can lose 40%, 50%. So for an insurance company to invest 100% in the stock market, extract all their fees and costs, and then guarantee in the nine, it's too good to be true. Here's the best part about it. It says this in big green letters, 9.1 annual annuity returns. And then in very small writing, in parentheses, it says indexed recent 12-month return. So what they're basically <laughs> saying is it's mimicking the last 12 months of the stock market, which were absolutely fantastic, which again, markets don't do well all the time. So they benchmark with a time that did really well in the stock market. Very tricky. Well, see, that's what happens. When you have an insurance product, they're not covered by you know, government agency like the SEC. like You and I could never make a claim like that because it's flat out false, number one. But number two, we'd be put in handcuffs and thrown in jail you know, for false advertising. But we don't have that regulatory agency with insurance companies. They can get away with this false advertising, unfortunately. Yeah, so I think the moral of the story here is when you hear these fantastic guaranteed returns, they're just not true. And you need to investigate further. You hear a lot about income for life, and you hear a lot about how you can't outlive the money from an annuity. But the problem is, and we talk about this all the time, there's usually a catch. And you need to figure out what that catch is. And I can promise you that insurance salesman is not going to give you the catch because a lot of times you're giving up your principal. And then they're just paying you over time money that if you could invest it on your own conservatively. So it gets very complicated very quickly. Well, that's the beauty of being an investor, right? Every one of you has the opportunity to invest in the same assets that an insurance company can invest in. Why pay them another 1%, 2 or 3% a year for them to put it together when you can put it together yourself? If you're enjoying this podcast, if you're getting the knowledge that we believe you're getting out of it, we want to offer you a free consultation to make sure you have the best financial plan possible. We call it our Total Financial Master Plan. If you qualify, here's what you can expect. We're going to look at everything from taxes. Have you optimized your financial plan for taxes? We're going to show you how to save on taxes so there's more money in your pocket, not the government's. We're going to look at income. Income is so much more reliable than the ups and downs of the market. We're going to show how to optimize or increase the income on your portfolio. And we're going to look at diversification. What hidden risks do you have in your portfolio you don't know about? We're going to show you how to bulletproof and safeguard your portfolio, protect it for retirement. To see if you qualify, simply text the words free financial review to 844-752-6692. That's the words free financial review and text them to 844-752-6692. See if you qualify for our holistic total financial master plan. Thanks for listening. We'll have another great show on tap next week. Don't forget to subscribe to the No Pain, No Gain financial podcast on Apple iTunes, Google Podcasts, Spotify, and everywhere else you can get podcasts. If you're looking to listen to past episodes or to access resources mentioned on this show, Check out the full show notes of the program by clicking the link in the description of today's show or by visiting BeBullish.com. For Bob Payne, I'm Ryan Payne, and as always, Be Bullish. Information provided on today's show is provided for information purposes only and does not constitute investment, tax, or legal advice. Information has been obtained from sources that are deemed to be reliable, but their accuracy and completeness cannot be guaranteed. Always consult with an investment, legal, or tax professional before taking any action.